Hello everybody, this is Mr. Clifftron and welcome to today's match against the Turf Mowers. This is at the Pro Sports Arena and uh, yeah, so we're coming to you live from the indoor soccer tournament thing that I forgot the name of and stuff. Let's see really quick. The off the wall indoor invitational that's what it is so we are going to be playing the turf mowers and uh, hopefully we will get through all three games in this one sitting and then i can record a session drunk um <laughs> anyway let us get started uh so um let's see i really didn't come up with any things off my head to think about like or I, I didn't kind of plan anything out this time. So usually when I go into like recordings, I sort of have something at least sort of predetermined as to what I'm going to like say. So I basically kind of gone in th after the uh, last or before the last recording. Oh, I didn't foul. It's just no. Just, just forget you, Clinky. Um, but after the last recording, I before the last recording, gosh, words are things, um, the, I, I had watched, like, a Machinima, um, Inside Gaming, uh, video where they were talking about, like, oh, that whole topic, and so that was the reason why I ended up watching, or not watching, talking about those things in that video. Um, in this one, I am just kind of honestly focused on being able to do what I need to in order to like uh, like I'm focused on getting this one out of the way so I can do the other one and drink the rest of the rum that I have waiting before I have to leave where I currently am at my summer internship and drive back home because I can't really take that in the car with me <laughs> bad idea no no drinking and driving bad idea uh, I have not done it I will never do it um, just don't do it kitties don't do it bad it's bad Anyway, um, so, yeah, uh, I really don't have anything in particular that I want to express, I guess, in this episode. So, I, I guess the first thing I really want to do is kind of actually thank everyone for, like, all the support and, like, the little tips and tricks that you've been uh, giving to me to remind me kind of of how to do this stuff. Um, I should have definitely looked up who it was, uh, and I'm sorry that I don't remember your name off the top of my head or your username. Um, but this, uh, one of the commenters last episode gave me um, the hints on how to actually complete a goal kick or like a penalty kick. Uh, so that will be useful. And I actually, like ne after he mentioned it or she mentions it, I guess I can't really discriminate. I'm assuming he, because I don't think I really had any... I, I don't know. It's... I don't want to say I don't have any female viewers because I would, I don't want to like discriminate against audiences, but that's sort of like one of the trends, and I guess that's something I can sort of talk about and touch on. Um, you know, like the idea of kind of the gaming stigma uh, related to gender and how most of the time it ends up being guys really that end up you know playing playing games and doing things like that. I mean, that's just kind of the way that our society was built and kind of, uh, or it really wasn't how our society was built. It was mainly the initial stigma that it was, the gaming was like a nerd thing. And usually girls weren't considered to be nerds. Like that was always like the geeky little guy with the gigantic glasses, the acne and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But in reality, like, all those stereotypes have kind of just been thrown out the window at this point. People that are intelligent and really smart don't necessarily look like that. I mean, that's pretty much a given. We've been kind of learning that for a long time. And, wow, that was a very strong kick there, Pablo. <laughs> strong enough for it to actually go out of play in the indoor invitational. Um, but, anyway, uh, like, that's... Like, the stereotypes kind of just centered around really gaming and you know intelligence in general have always been very negative um and it's it's definitely a very different atmosphere i would say nowadays like 
with the advent of um, Major League Gaming, I mean, it's not necessarily the best example. I mean, you're still going to get people that aren't exactly, like, the most athletic or, uh, like, the least like those traditional stereotypes but at the same time you will see quite a few of them that really don't fit those initial like the gamer mold or like the the stereotypes that people initially kind of came up with for being gamers and being nerds and that's not to say that all gamers are nerds either and or geeks um but that's like again you know a stereotype and so there's all these different things that are out there nowadays that really they're they're starting to be broken um so there if you watch like rooster teeth uh anything that they do uh specifically like the things like the no um you'll realize like on their new show like they have a few um former frag dolls i believe uh that have actually joined their crew to do like the no and all the different things that go on around in the rooster teeth community um or at least like the the Rooster Teeth set a suite of videos, and come on, I really want to use this. I really want to use this. I really want to use this before time goes up. Oh, come on, Vicky, steal it, v Vicky, v go, 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 go. No. Aww. Anyway, we uh, we won four zero in our first indoor indoor invitational match, and the Wombats, believe it or not, beat out one of the other teams that gets sent in here. So we'll be playing them. Um, and we see them normally, so that's interesting, but let's see, and then the Hat Tricksters lost to the Junior Monsters, the Junior Monsters, I believe, are in our, uh, small league, and the only one that isn't really in our league that actually moved on are the Abominable Cherry Pickers, and they're picking their nose, so we may actually end up seeing an indoor, indoor invitational where it's just teams from our, uh, regular schedule that are going to be in the finals. Um, and that we'll end up playing. Anyway, um, go ahead and start that up. Uh, so, basically, the, the new, uh, like, the frag dolls that are playing, I mean, obviously, are that the former frag dolls that are now working at Rooster Teeth. So, frag dolls, in, like, in general, just that group has broken kind of through to specific areas. I mean, so they, they're definitely hardcore gamers, and they're very beautiful women that go out and do it. Granted, that necessarily isn't necessarily, like, the only set of women. Like, it's not just these few beautiful women that do play games. I mean, there are women from all genders and... Or not genders. Wow, I'm... Well, I mean, there are people from every gender that like video games. It doesn't matter what kind of gender you are, and, I mean, you can enjoy video games. But, I mean, they're... the people that are come in all different shapes and sizes that will that enjoy video games that play them and we're really just kind of now starting to see that transition into uh yes that is a thing and that is acceptable and that's great in my opinion i mean it's very good to see that and then we still have one area where those different kind of gender roles and uh like <coughs> sort of racial roles racial roles are not as bad as they were uh like i mean you definitely see more of a, a mix of <coughs> races and things in games nowadays which is great but i mean th there's probably there's obviously still improvement in every every aspect i mean in our society in general you can always improve in some way in the way that we treat each other i mean it's just a fact like it's going to like there's always a way to make it better um but anyways um the one of the biggest areas though like in video games that there are the lack like in actual video games not just the people that play them um are, are just kind of women women in in video games are really very underrepresented and everybody's starting to try to in some way like change that so like you'll see i mean obviously world of warcraft for a long time has had like different you can choose either male or female um, when you're going and doing that, and I mean, they always have that option, and it's the same for now. Now for Call of Duty, which was that was a big thing in Call of Duty. They were like, hey, you can play as male or female. The same thing with Titanfall. I mean, like they have the option to do that. Like you can play male or female, but even then, they're usually hypersexualized. So it's not to say that it's not 
uh, like, I mean, it's it's good that there are women that are breaking through and, like, there are women in the roles of the actual um, protagonists. But, again, you get to the point where you start to see women just purely as sexual figures. And that's not really the way that we need to be continuously portraying them. Um, it's unfortunate, though, that as a part of our society, it generally the demographic for these kinds of video games are going to be like roughly i mean young adult males uh and teenage males that are really in general going you know they're some of them are going through puberty uh when they're in high school or like right around when they're going to high school and then you've got the ones that are uh, like the the twenty year olds that are just kind of there to party and bro out you know, and just you know do that kind of stuff and it it's just that demographic that prefers to see the hypersexualized images as opposed to kind of more fleshed out female characters and I mean there have definitely been strides to make that more of a thing but we really haven't ever gotten to that point and that's one of the things that I want to actually see happen um, I'm not a feminist <laughs> or anything uh i believe in <coughs> chivalry uh and things of that nature but hey yeah we got power up but i mean i don't w like you know think that it needs to get to the point where we're just tiptoeing around the subjects i mean i i think um louis ck is actually a, a very good kind of example when sort of when he was talking on race um the thing is, we need to start, like, you know, bringing up the issues and talking about them. And we need to say the things that maybe will offend people, but they will be able to actually start to, you know, get something going as far as a conversation is concerned. Um, the more we can start to talk and all, oh, we lost the power up again. That was annoying. Stop keeping the ball. Anyway. Um, oh, man. Come on. Dave, come on. Pablo, get it. <laughs> no. They're just continuously moving the ball, and it's annoying. No, okay, all right, we got it, we got it. All right, cool. Anyway, um, so I think, you know, we, we have to challenge the mold. And so saying some things that may be offensive that we need to say in order to actually, like, get a point out there, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Granted, you should never do something to just offend someone. Um, that's kind of the way that I'm, I'm looking at, like, if it's for pure, just antagonization, or, is that how it, is that the word, it's, I know antagonize is the word, and I just, for my mind is blanking on the actual word, and hey, yay, we win, uh, so now we're in the finals, and <laughs> we are literally <laughs> playing somebody from our own league, that's cool, anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and play that game for the championship of the Indoor Invitational. Yeah! Where are all the Venezuelas? They're, they're not there. I don't hear them. And all I hear is the whistle. Cheer for me! Anyway, um, so, I mean, you sh yeah, you should never spite somebody. Like, just, just to make them feel bad. That's, like, just not the way that we need to work as a society. And... It really is still unfortunate that, for the most part, we end up in the situation where, just in general, we have people that just want to put other people down. I mean, it it really doesn't make sense anymore. I mean, I, I understand sort of why it originally happened. I mean, it's the whole kind of survival thing, and asserting dominance helps to improve survival rates, and you know, for the people that you're caring for. But it's not a thing, really, anymore. The dominance that we need to be portraying is dominance in compassion and intellectual intellectuality. Yeah. So that we can, you know, use our significant uh, talents to do some good in the world and, you know, work together towards better things. And I feel like maybe... I mean, it, it, you can't necessarily guarantee that doing one particular thing is going to make the world a better place, but I think it's important that we start realizing that we need to challenge the social norms. And maybe the generation that we have now is really into hypersexualized women. I mean, in general, teenage boys and young adult boys 
they're gonna be interested in women there's no doubt about it like they're gonna want to have sex that's pretty much how it works that's how we're wired but it's important to realize that there's more than just that there's more than you know just having a good time um and looking at boobs that's like there's something else there and it's important really even for it, like those people that do have those feelings that you know hypersexualized characters are the way that they want to play games it's important to realize that's not how reality is i mean when you go out there you're not just going to find extraordinarily sexualized women i mean obviously as far as advertising goes you're going to see as many like sexual images as you possibly can see with regards to products that are going to be <coughs> towards like that particular crowd but that's because that's what they want but when you're going to find somebody that you actually want to you know have a relationship with or even just you know if you literally just want to have a one night stand i mean you can't do that by just simply going up and say hey sex now and just getting it it's it's not that kind of instant gratification we're humans yes we want it but we're also not going to be willing to give that um and so it's important really for people to understand that there's more to women than just you know that hypersexualization. um and the same really goes for men i mean so like f women obviously want to have a good looking guy for the most part um they want to have at least you know initially it's it's the same thing like i i'm i guarantee you either way like guys want beautiful women girls want beautiful guys i mean or well handsome guys it really doesn't matter what you want or how you look at it it's it's just a fact like we want to look at something that is appealing to us and unfortunately the world that we live in has just given all of us false hope that's just the way it is like with the ability to alter images and do things like that, we have essentially changed the way that we look at the world and the things around us, and it really doesn't give a fair chance to any of us. Like, we expect to see something, and when we don't get it the same way that we expected it, it just kind of ruins our expectations in general, and eventually leads to failure in whatever we're trying to do so it's important for us to also realize that we need realistic expectations um and i feel like possibly getting more f like fleshed out characters that aren't fleshed out in terms of their <laughs> actually f like their actual flesh if you understand what i'm saying there it, it might help to actually get more of a you know respectful vibe and sort of a better overall experience for everyone and how did i not use that power up was that do i have to click i think i might have to no i don't i don't click it wow i'm gonna get another tip i i'm pretty sure in the comments like you just have to kick I, I i'm pretty sure like is it that i have to kick it from in here yeah there it is you have to kick it from inside the the uh goal area that's right i it's like i remember these things and then i just don't do them initially and then i'm like oh oh yeah that's how i do it and that's gonna be a foul isn't it on me oh I'm gosh gonna try real hard Okay, this is an even worse situation. Um, I think... Oh. Yeah! Yeah, that's actually really awesome and nice that they do that for me, and it's really easy to handle. <laughs> um, ow. Give me the ball back, please. I mean, we barely have any time left in the second half. There's no way you're going to get six goals. Um, so you might as well just let me go ahead and take this all the way down. Oh, come on. Come on, Dante. Come on. Can you get it? Can you get it? Can you get it? Very little time left. Oh no, it bounced off the wall. <laughs> and there's full time. And we have just completely destroyed uh, and just swept every single one of these games completely. Just 100% completely destroyed them all. Um, I believe that's called skunking. Yes, that's it. We win! Coach Mr. Clifftron's Rockets.
kings of the carpet. <laughs> it was a tough road, but we stuck out. Oh, wait. No. It was a tough road, but we stuck to win the game and game plan. Wait. Wow. I am horrible at reading. Oh, my gosh. All right. Give me a second. I feel like I might already be drunk. Um, Not true, but let's see. All right. <sighs> All right. Do the, uh, the, the calm down. Prepare for prepare for this thing okay we're ready it was a tough road but we stuck to the game plan and came out winners said mikey thomas the rockets outspoken team leader mikey's our team leader <laughs> that's what i take out of that mikey is our team leader did not notice that um but anyway we literally won our last two games six to zero and the first one was four to zero and actually, the Wombats won 4-0 against the Rugburners. I mean, the Rugburners clearly just were terrible, terrible, terrible people. And the Wombats ended up losing their game. Um, and the Abominable Cherry Pickers ended up in third there. Wow, they actually got destroyed by the Junior Monsters. I mean, not nearly as bad as what I did to everybody else, but still. And the first two games were pretty close. But anyway... Um, so yeah, there we are, right there, the Green Rockets on the off-the-wall indoor invitational tournament trophy. Um, and that's going to be it for this episode. So thank you all for watching and listening to my ramblings on equal opportunity. Uh, and uh, I will see you in the next one where I will most likely be drunk. Anyway, thank you all again. Thank you in advance for all your tips and tricks, and adios.